They've got their dysfunction as well. And they've got wide receiver Alan Hearns saying after the loss to Houston on Sunday night that the wide receivers are getting open and aren't getting the ball. He also criticized the play calling. Then there was all the drama around Jason Garrett not going for it on fourth down. Dak Prescott has been struggling. Marcus, you live in Dallas. You played for the Cowboys. I'm asking you the same question I did with the Giants. If you put your finger on one issue in Dallas right now, what is it? Talent. Lack of talent. And they still don't know if they have a franchise quarterback, which is an issue. Think about this, Green. I pulled up some stats. My man, Hembo, I had mm -hmm. to pull. At this point in 16, Dak had 80 QBR, 1,200 yards. 2017, 80 QBR, 1,100 yards. This year, a 39 QBR and 961 yards. So what's the difference? The talent around him. Yeah. Everybody bashed me for talking about Dez Bryant leaving this team. Look, Dez Bryant opened up opportunities for Dak Prescott. Even if you didn't look at him as a number one receiver, he was a guy that defenses had to pay attention to and made this job easier for Dak Prescott. Just as well as Jason Witten. Now, there's some – Travis Frederick has been out. This off offensive line is not the same. They're getting older. But with that being said, man – Z, they're averaging 5.2 yards a carry right now running the football, but they're sucking on offense. Yeah. And the reason is is because you have no pass game to expose defenses when they stack the box for Ezekiel Elliott. It looks like they overestimated what they would get from guys like Alan Hearns and Tavon Austin and Deontay Thompson. It looks uh -oh. like they over – I'm just telling you. Look, Gee, hey, what they, hold Alan on. Hearns had a 1,000-yard a receiving year two years ago. Like, they bet that? Dez had just left with 800 yards. And they went and bypassed Calvin Ridley in the draft in the first round and Dallas Goddard in the second round. And they thought they could get by with the I'm guys that. I'm with you. I'm and yeah, I understand. I got it. And so, so far, it hasn't worked out the way they wanted with the production from the guys they need to step in and replace Dez and Jason Witten. How That's much of this can you actually trace back to the premature injury-created retirement of Tony Rowe? A lot. A lot. Because this franchise, look... People have their perceptions about Tony Romo, but I'm telling you right now, nine could lift the team oh, yeah. beyond some of their faults. That's how good he was. Maybe not the Super Bowl or the playoff guy, but during a regular season and when you see lacks and things that are deficient offensively, he could compensate for a lot of it. Him, he and Dez had a great rapport. We, it's is it a coincidence that Dak Prescott came in as the quarterback and Dez Bryant production fell off? That's not a coincidence. That's a continuity between Tony Romo and Dez Bryant. And obviously, Jason Witten. That's also Tony Romo having the freedom to come up to the line of scrimmage and say, I don't like that play. I'm going to run this play because of the time that he had put in in the league. This is a recovery from Tony Romo's premature retirement. But saying this, they're still in the thick of that division. Right. Because that division has become the worst division in football. Who would have thought that the once vaunted yeah. NFC East would be this bad so far? But <laughs> it is. It's been awful everybody. so far. Yeah.